Have you ever wondered how to get yourself banned from basically any GitHub repo out there? Well, someone worked it out. That's someone being the maintainer of app images pro bono and one of his fellow devs as you beta, where they got themselves banned from the OBS project repo. Now you might be wondering, well, what did they do to get banned? Well, what they did is they have been trying to get OBS to support an official app image. Now, before you get angry and say, that's terrible, how dare they get banned for that? They were the ones in the wrong. Now to see how this happened, let's go all the way back to where this started back in December of 2018. This was when the initial pull request was made to make app image support. This was explaining why app image might be beneficial and included a build script that would make a basic app image. Now, this app image was by no means perfect. In fact, it was actually like very, very broken, and Probono was very aware of this, and he was looking to get feedback on, you know, what can be improved and how it might be improved. And this pull request went back and forth for quite a while, with lots of updates being done, lots of fixes being made, lots of testing being done to make sure it's going to work, you know, everywhere the app images should be working, which, under a perfect world, should be basically every distro. Ultimately, though, this one was stopped because Travis CI, the CI system being used by OBS, was being swapped out for something different, so this had to be completely reworked. Following that, this pull request right here was being made, basically to continue the exact same efforts. Once again, this one went on for quite a while. Then following that, this one was made from some other random person. This was a separate app image project. And then finally, this one here from Azubeta was made. And at least initially... This one went fairly similar to the past couple. The approach that was being taken to make the app image was a little bit different, but the PR went basically the same. They were looking for feedback, they were going back and forth, they were making change and all of that fun stuff, people pointing out errors and things like that. Up until this message right here, where Avid179 said, is anybody going to approve this? Now at this stage, it was not ready for approval. It, it still had a lot of bugs, as Dodgepong right here pointed out. As best as I can tell, none of the issues mentioned by, I'm going to say, Rito-EX, which is this comment right here, have actually been addressed. There is a bunch of problems here which still needed to be fixed. So this PR will definitely not be approved before those issues are addressed. And even if they are, that is not a guarantee it will then be approved. At this point, the first crack started to form. Azubeta replies by saying, Dodgepong, so far we need the workflows to be approved so we can test the final result and fix all the issues. Now, this was something that GitHub had recently changed. Prior to this point, you didn't need to be approved to actually do the CIs. So Fenrir, one of the other maintainers of OBS, replied by saying, Apologies on this one. I didn't realize this was a newer feature of GitHub. We needed to manually approve the CIs for PRs. But then he follows by saying, the following is my own opinion and does not represent the views of the project as a whole. If you're waiting for an approval from us, I would suggest explaining exactly what we need to approve and why it's holding up fixing the other issues and answering the questions we've presented multiple times. Because there were things wrong with the app image that didn't need the CIs to be approved. I'm frankly getting a little tired of our asks, comments, and questions being ignored and the constant repeated comments of when will this be merged, when we've already explained what needs to be done. We still don't have a response from the app image team on what components are working, what is not working, what needs work, what cannot work, etc. That ask for approval wasn't the first time that someone asked for it to be merged. If we scroll back through the list, we'll see going all the way back up to the top here, Back in 2020, Pro Bono asked for it to be merged. Back in 2021, Avid asked for it to be merged. You have another one asking for it to be merged. You have another one asking for it to be merged. None of these points, it was ready to be merged. They kept being told about bugs that were in the app image, and while some of them were being addressed, a lot of them were basically just being ignored. But the other big problem is post-merge support. So the OBS team weren't working on the app image themselves. This was something coming from external. So you'd expect that external person to keep maintaining the project to make sure it, you know, keeps working. So if this app image build was actually merged, it would work for a while, something would be changed in the OBS project, it would stop working, and then the OBS team would just have an extra commitment they have to deal with that they never actually ask for. 
But after that little spat, things sort of went back to normal for a little while. Azu Beta was doing some damage control, basically saying, hey, OBS is a big project. This is obviously something really complex. And everyone was like, yeah, you know what? Let's just go back to work and keep things going. Up until October of 2021, where this comment right here was posted from Fenrir. So between July and October, it looked like the project was basically dead. No one was working on it, no one was testing stuff, no one was fixing all of the bugs that still existed. So Fenrir decided, you know what? It's time to just put this to rest. The project is over. Thank you for the efforts here, but it seems like there are too many issues that are not resolved, questionable supportability, and general lack of demand. The OBS project team is not positioned to take on the responsibility of another package ecosystem at this time. And without commitments from the app image team and closer involvement in the core development of OBS to address and resolve the issues that might come up, we unfortunately must decline to merge this. And from OBS's perspective, that totally makes sense. The pull request has just been sitting here for a couple of months, no one has been working on it, so clearly no one really cares about it. But Pro Bono didn't really like that answer. Azubeta has continuously put in efforts and has essentially done all the work over at this GitHub repo right here. Has anyone declined anything? What is missing Fenrir? All of these bugs had still not been addressed. They'd been sitting there some of them for literally over a year. Some of them were just straight up being ignored. And as I mentioned, Fenrir also had these concerns about post-merge support, whether the app image team was actually going to, you know, keep this app image really going. And finally he said, Again, just to be blunt here, it doesn't seem like the app image team is fully committed to integrating into our development workflows, and I have some strong concerns about long-term supportability of this. If we merge it, we're giving it an effective official stamp of approval and accepting the support for it, which we are just not interested in doing at this time, and I haven't heard anyone from the app image team step up and accept that responsibility in a clear, unambiguous statement. Thank you for understanding, and I think that's totally fair. But even though Pro Bono at this point had been personally working on this support for the past three years, he's now redefined what his and the App Image team's involvement in this project actually is, saying, For the benefit of clarity, the App Image team makes tools that application authors can use to produce app images. Like application authors can use a compiler to produce a binary, like the developers or compilers, the app image team can't deep dive into the inner workings of each and every application that gets built using it. But of course, we are more than happy to fix any issues with the tooling that might come up. Anyhow, that's how I think about it. And Azubeta basically said the exact same thing. As Proverno said, we make tools for creating app images, but we cannot take responsibility of maintaining a given project. What do you mean? You literally made pull requests when you've been doing this for the past three years. What do you mean you can't take responsibility for maintaining the project? You've already been doing that. And then Fenrir replied by basically saying, you know what, we're done here. This PR was originally conceived, developed, and submitted by app image developers, not our community. Thank you again for the efforts. We are not interested in your tools at this time. And this sat dormant for about seven months until Pro Bono wanted to get himself banned, where he said this right here, but this wasn't the original version. I'll show you the original version in just a moment. First replying to this statement right here, on whose decision, on what basis? Had that been stated clearly from the beginning in 2018, Azu Beta and I would have saved many, many hours of work. Now that is a complete mischaracterization on what was being said here. What they were not interested in was you shilling your tools to them and then leaving and letting them maintain it themselves. If you were going to say, hey, we want this app image for OBS and we are going to post support it. We're going to make sure this is always working well. If people have problems with the app image, they can direct their problems to us. They would have been more than happy to have this be supported because they've literally done this with the flat pack. That's the way the Flatpak project works. It started as this third-party community project and then eventually got merged into OBS and is still being managed by those same people. And then Pro Bono brought up the Flatpak. 
Let's see who originally conceived, developed, and submitted Flatpak support. My guess is Red Hat or Flatpak or GNOME developers, not your community. Now, I don't think this is the case. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. But I don't think these are mutually exclusive groups. I think you can work for Red Hat and also develop OBS or be part of the Flatpak community and also develop OBS. Like, these aren't things that you can't do at the same time. But anyway... Let me check. Indeed, the person who implemented it has pushed several Red Hat related technologies to this project. Flatpak, Wayland, and Pipewire. If it wasn't very obvious yet, Pro Bono is part of the Red Hat bad community where anything that Red Hat touches is inherently bad. But let's go back and look at the Flatpak. So where did the Flatpak actually come from? So originally it started in this repo right here. This started back in 2017. So if we go back through the commit history, there's only 106 commits because eventually it did get merged into the main project. This was started, I should have just grabbed a link to the final page, but this was started by a guy called Tingping. Now, Tingping does have ties with things that Pro Bono doesn't like. He is a GNOME developer, he's a flat hub maintainer, works on WebKit and things like that. Eventually the project was taken over by another guy, that being... Uh, Georgius Stavrakis, who you may have heard of before because he also was involved in getting Pipewire support and OBS to actually do capture on Wayland. He's literally the guy who did that. And you know what? He did it for free because he started using Wayland. He wanted to use OBS because he wanted some way to actually capture it. There was like a sketchy plugin you could use, but it wasn't a good solution. So he decided, I'm going to just make OBS better. And then he did. And... That's all there is to it. And I don't know about you, but I would say that makes you a part of the OBS community. And the trifecta of Red Hat being bad wouldn't be complete if you didn't mention the fact that around the same time that official Flatpak support was announced, OBS received a $10,000 donation from Red Hat. Therefore, that means that Red Hat paid for Flatpak support. Even though the project was already a community project literally four years prior, so... Did they just decide to pay them now after four years of working on it completely for free? Maybe. I'm going to say it's kind of unlikely though. But because Gaming on Linux posted this article with this title, even though the actual body of the article doesn't say these things are related, people keep using this as evidence. But that wasn't the original comment. The original comment was this right here. Seems like one must donate, implying that they were paid to do it, 10,000 USD like Red Hat, who got a flat pack promptly. Once again, five years in the making. Links to gaming on Linux. This smells badly. I wonder why you got banned. Could it be by, you know, spreading misinformation about the project? Could it be bothering them about merging something that isn't done? Could it be not fixing the bugs and then bothering them about merging it? Could it be any of the other number of things that happened across these pull requests, like not committing to post-merge support and expecting the OBS team to do it? So following this, Fenrir basically tore into him, explaining a lot of the same stuff that I just explained, but also mentioning that part of the reason he was banned is because of the Twitter thread he made. This Twitter thread is absolutely fantastic. I'm not going to make you sit here and, you know, read all of it, but I'm going to show you some fun excerpts. The helpful contributor they're referring to as Ubeta is trying to say this could be best tackled in a collaboration between someone who knows the inner workings of OBS and someone who knows app image as there's apparently no one who knows both. You and Azubeta made the pull request. You're the people who should know both. And Ben Terrell says, correct. Nobody on the app image team seems to care enough about OBS to learn it well enough to debug issues, and nobody on the OBS team cares enough about app image to do the same. Peruno says, hence, let's work together. I think he still thinks there's like a friendly relationship between the two of them. And Ben says, you need to convince us that that would be worthwhile use of our time. And all he does, doesn't try to convince him in any reasonable way, lists the benefits of app image, as if Ben has not already seen this list a bunch of times. See, again, this is where your pitch needs work. You throw this list at me suggesting that I haven't read it, even though it's your second time you've linked it in this conversation. <laughs> 
Give me use cases. Describe to me problems that users have and how App Image solves them. And this is where we get the greatest reply ever. User story. I, as a user, want to download the Linux version of OBS Studio from this link right here. Just like I can for the Windows and Mac. Keep multiple versions around and archive them and run them without needing root rights. I kind of hope just to spite him, they make that link download the Flatpak ref. That would be the funniest conclusion. Right now there is a button to take you to Flathub, so that's a tiny good first step. It's important to note that even though Pro Bono and his lackeys have been banned from the repo, app image discussion itself hasn't been banned. Like with the Flatpak support, if someone comes along and says, hey, we actually want to properly support this, we understand app images, we understand OBS, we are going to work on the issues and make sure this has proper post-merge support, they are more than happy to at least reopen the discussions and see if this can properly be done. So take this as a lesson in how to not get something supported. If you want to actually get something supported in a project, especially something that does require a lot of post-merge support, you need to be respectful to the team. You need to make sure it's very clear what you are going to do, what you are not going to do, and not sort of drag this along for a really long time with both sides being under completely different assumptions. And even if it turns out after a couple of years, they are no longer interested, Move on with your day. If you really want it to be supported, go and fork the project and show them why they should be using it. But anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you think he should have been banned? Do you think that was an overreaction and they should have just closed the PR and then went about their day? I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, to the Barrow Pay link in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech of a Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.